Oh, Black Bear, you got some issues. You got some clutch issues now. So let me show you what I think. Let me show you the symptoms, and then I'll show you maybe a $3 fix for it. We're working on it slowly but surely. Let me show you the symptoms. The symptoms are that when it's cranked up, it has a hard time going in first and reverse. And I think, so let me go ahead and crank up the truck here. Oh, I was working on this vent thing. I got to go behind the glove box and look at that blend door actuator. I replaced some of the vacuum lines in there and it hasn't fixed my problem yet. So let me crank this up here. That sounds so good, don't it? Let me show you my problems. All right, now let's go to first. See, hear that? Now try to go to reverse. I don't think it's a synchronizer. Let me tell you, let me show you what I think it is. And obviously, it goes it goes into gear when the when the motor's off. But let me show you what I think it's a three dollar fix here. There is a clutch bushing up there that may be the issue here. Let me see if I can set a light up here. Try to set it up here. And I think it's this piece right here where my finger is. Let me see. Let me turn my light on here. All right. That's the piece I think it is right here. So that piece, see how it moves when I push the clutch in? See it moving, traveling? There's a bushing right here. They make a permanent fix for it. That you can, It's like a heim joint that you screw onto it. But there's that bushing just comes out, and you can replace it with like a $3 bushing. I think that might be my issue. Well, that's what I'm going to try first. And then if that doesn't work, I may look at the slave cylinder. But those are notorious for going bad and uh, wearing out that bushing, wearing out. Still haven't. Hey, listen. If I want, <laughs> if I want my windows to go up and down, I use these alligator clips right here and throw them to 12 volts. But anyway, so let me run to the store. Let me get the uh, bushing. AutoZone sells them. Advanced Auto, O'Reilly's, Napa, uh, any any parts house should have them. They're like three bucks, or you can get them for five six bucks off ebay or whatever if you have a couple days but they're always in stock so let's run up there let's get it let's get it put on the longest part of my journey will be going to go get the part because it uh takes me like 25 minutes to get to the parts house All right, let's go see what they got. $29 later, I got a test light and this bushing here. Let me show you the bushing. This is the bushing that we're gonna replace here. So uh, I'll show it to you when we get back to the house, but it, uh, I left my test light on, uh, on another vehicle we was working on and Daggum if I've run off and forgot it, so I had to buy a new one. But what's funny is I'll probably get back and that test light will be sitting on the fender somewhere of that vehicle that we was working on. So anyway, let's get back to the house and see if this little let's see if that bushing will work. Alright, let's see if I can set y'all here and get this piece. Um right here off i think all i gotta do is pull it off it should just slide off it does see how easy that was it just slid right off all right and then hook it out like so all right, now put the new bushing in there. Sometimes you have to be real concerned about if this is get, if it gets wallered out as well. That's why the permanent fix is a better, a better option than just replacing this bushing. 
All right, let's see if I can push this back up in here. I'm gonna take this piece. Yeah, it might still be a little loose. And then stick it back on. All right, let's see how that works. Let's see if my gears go in better. Let's take a look at the old one first. So this was the old one. Doesn't look like there's any wear to it, but. And that new one went straight in pretty easy. So I'm thinking that that hole may be wallered out. This is the part number though. Let's see, it's a Dorman Fitz 4 GM bow clutch pedal bushing interior 74 up in the top right corner, 74014. 74014. It was actually, it, you know, like 10 bucks. I think so I bought the test light and the and this old piece here for all right I bought the test light and the new piece it was like 28 bucks but I, I'm pretty sure this was like 10 bucks but still even if it's a 10 bucks <laughs> look at all the I didn't even need anything I just uh I brought all these pliers thinking I might need it but let's see if it fixed my problem before I do that, look, this is an Olight. It's magnetic, rechargeable. I'm telling you, I, I've been a, an affiliate for them for three years. If you want an Olight, get one of these workshop lights. Magnetic, 10% HF10. Link is in the description, but can't go wrong with these Olights. I love them. Let's see if it fixed my problem. All right, put my ball cap back on. Get this out of the way. Let's see if she works pray she does wait to start all right clutch is down to the ground no not working Set it going fifth. Won't go in third. No. So maybe it's a slave cylinder. Oh, there it went. But did you hear? Did you hear that? Yeah, that's not good. So I don't think it's the clutch. I actually think it's the slave cylinder. So that didn't work. But I mean, like I say, it was... A, it was an attempt at a cheap fix before before we started on the slave cylinder. Climbing up under the truck now. Get up here in the slave cylinder. It's got fluid in it, so. And I don't see anything leaking or anything like that, so we're good there. That That's not a hard play. That's not a hard uh, repair, neither. And it's fairly inexpensive. I, I can't remember. You can buy just a slave cylinder for like 30 bucks and i think you can buy the whole kit where it comes with this it goes all the way up to the master clutch or this you know the clutch slate master cylinder pre-bled i don't think they're like 150 bucks something like that but we'll try that next see what happens as i think about that it could be that part where it's wallered out and that may be causing it to to uh, still not depress all the way but I, you know, like I say, for, I'm not a, if you, if you watch the channel, you know, I fire parts cannons at things <laughs> because anyway, I'll do some more research, see if it, if it is indeed, because the guy told me, the previous owner told me it had a fairly new clutch in it. That's why I don't think the clutch is the problem. I think it's the, some of the exterior components like the slave cylinder. I've, it's got plenty of fluid in it. I've checked that already. I even topped it off. So I think I just try to slave cylinder and go from there. Well, I ordered the slave cylinder. I got it from carparts.com. It's a it's a pre-bled or pre-filled system. Uh, clutch master cylinder REP F316001. Uh, that's the uh, SKU number, I guess. Clutch master cylinder. It is a pre-bled system, so it comes with. The external slave cylinder here, the master cylinder up here, the heat shield here, 
the connecting rod that goes inside the cab onto the clutch pedal. And then I thought I saw a grommet. I think there's a grommet in here too, yeah. Here, and I'm pretty sure that's for the firewall that this goes through, maybe. But anyway, it's a simple process. Uh, it's only two bolts. And don't, this part right here comes zip tied, right? Don't take these, or not zip tied, but secured. Don't take this off until you're ready to put this onto the vehicle. Or you'd be messing yourself up because that will, that, once you take this retaining plastic strip off, it allows the uh, push rod to, to ex, uh, not retract, but extend. So, should be, should be easy, should be good to go. So let's take the old one off. Uh, I can go ahead and get on the inside. And do the inside first. This is, we're going to do that part where, Oh, I need it. Let me get you guys a flashlight. So up here is the new part, the ten dollar part that I got off of O'Reilly's. This right here, you can see my finger tapping. So we're gonna take it off. Take this clip off here. Remove it. Ah, come on. One thing about being a YouTuber is you have to learn how to do everything with one hand because you got to hold the camera certain spots. Let's see if I can get this here. Let's try that. There it goes. So remove that. This pinches. You may have to take a little pair of pliers or something. Take that off with. Oh, no, that's it. So, that's that. And then this should just pull out. Let me see if there's another clip up there that's holding that on. I did notice something about this too. Check this out. These two clipped wires right here. I wonder what obviously they went up into this connector here but I don't know what what it does let me get a little screwdriver I'm hoping this turns out all right I hope there's not a tab up top neither. Let's see if I can move this light. Yeah, there's just, man, I'm talking about no room whatsoever. It's not hard, it's just trying to get to it. It's the, it's the tough part. Especially when you're dropping your light everywhere. Let me see if I can get it mounted up here somewhere I can see. Stay. Alright, let's try to take it out from the engine bay side and see if that helps loosen something up. Before we do that, we'll do the, uh, I'll show you underneath where we're going to take off and how we're going to do that. All you need is a, you need a flat screwdriver. So this is what we're taking off here. This little clip just comes out and then this comes off and then you just, you reroute the the wire here the hose and it just goes up to the top it's a really easy process so let me see if I can put y'all somewhere where y'all can see all 
right, I got y'all set on the cross member. You just take your screwdriver and you just literally you pry this back and it just comes off, it just slides off. I know my hands in the way there, but let me show you on this side. So just take your screwdriver up here and then this literally just slides out it's super easy and now your slave cylinder is off of your throw out there that's it for that side now we just got to run it up through set it here out of the way and then just this hose here the line here gets the connection right there I could probably uh, use a screwdriver for that as well. Get my screwdriver up here. There you go. Just like so. Now all we got to do is unbolt it from the firewall, get the inside taken out. This is the piece that goes onto your clutch pedal. And then this is the part we just took off. You just took your screwdriver in there and pried it up. I didn't see a heat shield down there, but we'll put the new one on it. And then here inside the firewall, this is your, your, your brake master cylinder. There's two bolts. There's one behind this cap, and then there's one on the bottom of it. So we got to get... Oh, look, we can turn that. So we got to get this one. And then there's one underneath it. What size is that? Probably half inch or so. Let's, let's try a half inch first. Huh? Yeah. Gina's getting in the side by side and just think about how bad of a driver she is. I mean, on her driving test, she got 18 out of 20. You know, the other two guys survived. <laughs> I get no respect. Yeah, these are a half inch. So we get this one off. Get the easy one off first. And then we'll spend time with the with the more difficult ones. Probably get a socket on that. Let me see. Simple six point deep well. You probably don't even need a deep well. Oh, I meant to say I got the uh I started this process at seven seven forty eight. So we'll see we'll see what it says when we're done. I meant to show you guys that on my phone, but I forgot. Not quite, not quite yet. It's not too difficult to access. Oh, 
I'll see if I can do it with a socket. So this is the other one underneath it here. If you're left-handed, you got this no problem. If you're right-handed and can't do anything with your left hand, <laughs> like me, that's challenging. That's almost all. Then what I like to do is I like to get it like super close to the end and then drop it. Come on. Okay, okay. See if we can access what we were trying to get in the firewall down there. Uh, we're just gonna pull that bad boy all the way out. Maybe not. Maybe you gotta take that off. All right, let me. This might be a lesson learned here. That. Oh no, I got. I can access it here. This is what I was trying to take off right here. That, that pin right there. And then this should just, well, we don't need it to come off because we're putting a new one on it. But this should just, now we just got to weed this. Let me cut off this zip tie that's holding it. This zip tie is holding a, a wire, some type of wire that someone fed through there. Let me get underneath and push this up now. Now we just fish this up through here. Our, yeah. All right, I think I can pull that up. Our worst case scenario, I just un unscrew it from the cylinder. We should be able to do that right there. There you go. Easy cheesy lemon squeezy. Simple process. This is what the new one looks like. Put that in there. Pour it down through the middle. Again, I got this off carparts.com. I'll put a link in the I'll put a link in the uh, across the screen here or their website. Across the screen. Just 
the big puzzle is all it is. Get down there and figure that part out. She's she's ready to go downstairs. All we gotta do is get her upright here. Now, I'll put this piece, the rubber piece in here, or not, I guess that is rubber. See here, like so. Down there, like so. Put at least one nut on it to keep it from coming off. You don't have to worry about putting like Loctite or nothing like that on there. Yeah, just getting it's not hard, it's not a hard job at all. All you need is a screw flat screwdriver and a half inch wrench. And you got it. It's just, you know, you gotta you gotta run these cables and wire or not cables and wires, but you gotta run these lines and hoses. Without cross threading them. There we go. Careful not to cross thread. So now, see how this silver line, this uh, hydraulic line goes beside the exhaust manifold? That's where the heat shield goes. So let's put that on there. I'm not sure that's where that goes, but we'll keep it there. How's that? I would assume it went beside the exhaust manifold. But we can do that. All right, now let's go inside. Let's put the, or let's go down. Go, let's go down under underneath and put put it back on. You're gonna. Oh, I said a half inch and a screwdrivers. You're gonna need some side cutters as well. We're gonna use the side cutters to. Uh, Cut the retaining clip off that. All right, remember how we run it through? That line right there, and this line right here. Gotta redo that. Like so. And like so okay so those are back together and then this is where your side cutters come in hope you guys can see that Okay. 
get my screwdriver. So I messed up. I took that retaining clip off and dog on it. I knew I knew better than that. I took that retaining clip off. Now I'm gonna have to figure out a way to put that back in there. I knew better than that. I uh, sat there and told you guys not to take that clip off. And I did it. make that mistake guys ah. Ah. man rats man if I wouldn't have we'd have been done by now All right, what can I do to what can I do to press that in? I wonder if I could. See, it's round. That's the problem. I just don't have mine. All right, what I did, fellas, is I put the cap back on. Let me tell you something, that was not fun. Now let's try it again, shall we?
finally. Good Lord. a bunch of dust now I just got to get that plastic cap back out of there which is probably easier than getting to put on that was just that was aggravating get some yeah this is the hardest hardest part right here fella there it goes I say this is the hard part we ain't put the we ain't put the piece in through the thing yet the firewall It's just, you need one more piece, you need one more place to grab it, you know. And then it would come out. Without, you know, trying not to damage the, the new piece. Get some flat. Let me get some flat, like lime and pliers type stuff. If I get that, once I get that piece off here, we'll be good to go. Yeah, this is I didn't tear any boots up or nothing like that that's the piece I was after right there and everything is still intact now I don't know if you showed up while I go but you gotta make sure this line is not uh, crimped all right so make sure that that's happening all right let's go connect the inside and call this project complete all right we still need to tighten down the actual uh, master cylinder itself the clutch cylinder master cylinder but now we can go on the inside and get that I think you did I literally think you just poke it through the through the hole there and call it good we'll put this piece back together what is this what is this piece you guys let me know in the comments if you if you know what this piece is it just snap back together so I hope that's all there is to it. 
hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Hope I can see what I'm doing. Take this off. Okay, what's going on here? Why is that not going in? this clamp back on here I have no idea where those two why those two are out I hope you guys can see that because I can't see the camera angle but essentially that's all back together let's tighten it down This is the last step, and we should be good. <clears throat> Get moving, guys. Sorry. Okay, let's see Now, let's see if it works. Let's see what time it is. 8.48, so exactly one hour. So if I wouldn't have screwed up on that, that retaining clip thing, that probably took 10 minutes. So for 45 minutes, you can get this changed. So let's see, let's fire it up, see how it does. I can already tell the clutch pedal's way better. I mean, it just feels, feels way better. Look at that. No grinding. Going through the, all the gears. Uh oh. Yeah. No, that's all right. Let's see how she does. Oh yeah, I, I can feel the release better. Yeah, this is this is gooder, as they say. Let's take it for a ride, you know too. Yeah, I can feel the, the, the clutch just feels feels more firm. So that's good. We'll just run it through the gears here. Sometimes you gotta push the <laughs> sometimes you actually gotta push the clutch in when you're changing gears. Sometimes not though. This chuck's easy to float, by the way. Yeah, it feels way better. I 
Oh, I forgot. I probably thought they'd get all cray cray. I got uh, I got stuff not bolted down on the bed. But that's enough. That uh, that feels good. Yeah, it shifts. It shifts smooth, no problem. So, so that's a good sign. Again, I got it at carparts.com is the the website I got the piece from. There she is. Let's talk about a few things. All right, so the job took an hour, even when I messed up by leaving that or taking that retaining clip off. Um, keep that on until it's ready to go in, but you know, so an extra 10, 15 minutes to the project, 30 minutes to an hour to change it out, if it's pre-bled. Carparts.com is where I got it from. Uh, it was the best price that I could find for a pre-bled system. I didn't want to go through the process of ble bleeding it out and all that good stuff. You can do that, and they're probably $50 cheaper, maybe even $60 cheaper if you buy one that's not pre-bled. I got the whole kit and caboodle, slapped it in there. Half inch uh, ratchet, wrench, flat screwdriver, some side cutters if you need to cut some zip ties with, and a flashlight. I think that was all I used, wasn't it? So. Anyway, so it's a simple project. This truck is for sale. As the making of this video, this truck is for sale. I'm, I'm asking 13.5, and people people get uh, you know crazy when you start asking about prices like that. But I think it's fair market value. Um, it's got uh, a, probably a six to eight thousand dollar bed on it. The engine and the trans is probably worth four to six grand, and then um, the the Alcoas were two grand. And they're brand new and uh, then the rest of it you know is is a couple of grand got some electrical problems the fuel gauge don't only goes to half the power windows power locks doesn't work the air conditioning is uh, they I don't know if it's just a vacuum problem or if it needs a whole new system I'm not smart enough to know that so it's got some issues uh, it's pretty rough on the interior but 13.5 I think is fair market value especially with the bed on it and as good a shape as the engine and transmission is the engine's got about a hundred and it's probably getting close to 150,000 now so it had 140 mid maybe 145 on it when I bought it on the motor itself so but it's a good running truck it, it cranks it drives I drive it three times a week four times a week but probably not going to be driving it as much now that we got the new ram 4500 but it is for sale if you're interested 13.5 uh, is what i'm asking uh send me an email i'm in uh i'm in i'm close to panama city beach florida to give you a reference of where the truck is located the uh tires are uh i don't know 50 percent maybe something like that so 50 60 percent on the tires got new headlights new chicken lights it's got uh it's got two tanks the, ta the rear tank is not plumbed to the front tank but i think all it needs is plumb it's got a full tank it, it, that rear tank is 30 something gallons heck that's you know that's sixteen thousand dollars in fuel right there <laughs> anyway if you're interested 7.3 liter power stroke diesel if you're interested give me a call maybe we can work something out uh hank at hamiltonvillefarm.com and uh i think you know it's a solid truck it's a good farm truck good work truck so anyway appreciate you guys watching if you need to do a slave cylinder now it's got a new slave cylinder on it if you need to do that yourself it's an easy project if you buy one that's pre-bled from carparts.com and uh, i think that uh it's simple enough all right you guys take care i appreciate you guys watching the video god bless